Welcome back everyone to a new video. As you can see, in today's very special video, we are going to do a very in-depth review of a pair of shoes from Acme Shoemaker. Coming up. We're back, sort of, after quite a long break and we're back with a bang because this is a very special video about a very high-end pair of shoes. Which, if you remember, or if you follow the Misho Academy blog, I've already published an article, a very in-depth article about them. And finally, I got the time and the motivation to do a video that does them justice because these are very high-end, excellent shoes that everybody should probably see and uh, hopefully admire. Acme Shoemaker is an emerging brand over the last three, four years, I would say, that comes from China, but it's not the type of shoemaking brand that you may be used to when you're thinking about uh, Chinese-made products. And probably you can tell by the price tag of approximately 1,500 US dollars that this is serious business. This is the real deal. These are shoes that are genuinely handmade, hand-welted, hand-lasted, hand-clicked. Even the sole is hand-sewn for a very fair price point using great materials and proper bespoke techniques. And for those that have an even higher budget, they do actual bespoke shoes, so you can make whatever you pretty much want. And they were kind enough to send me a pair of shoes back then uh, in exchange for just my review. And even though I offered to send them back after my review, they let me keep them, so I'm very happy. I've used them for a while, and now I feel it's the appropriate time for me to review them. I've also implemented in the in-depth and, uh, you know, close-ups a bit more cinematography and some uh, different new things. I hope you will like them. Uh, let me know in the comments. But without further ado, let's get cracking and go to the close-up. Let me quickly show you the unboxing experience first, because this is the box that the shoes come up with. And this is a very nice deep purple uh, with some silver details uh, box. It is very, very hefty, very robust, very high quality and uh, will surely protect your shoes. Uh, it also has some very nice small difference in the pattern here and uh, the, the lid comes off very, very easily. And apart from that, you also get two of these really, really high quality shoe bags that are made from this very thick, heavy tweed uh, type of material uh, with, of course, lining and a tartan pattern. It is really, really nice. And if those don't protect your shoes, I don't really know what can during storage or transport. And of course, a quick look at the actual shoes. You can see up close and personal that the shape is fantastic. Uh, the color, uh, the patina shows up really well. Uh, the details, uh, it, is, it is a really nice shoe. And even after being worn, as you see, even the sole still looks phenomenal. Now, let me show you the actual close-up. Let's begin by talking about the leather, a really important aspect of a shoe. This particular leather is hand-painted and it has this sort of mid-brown color, but with red, really rich undertones, as you can see. It depends on the lighting, of course, and the lighting conditions, because when you're inside, it will just appear just a nice mid-brown or dark brown shoe, but when you're outside or under a certain light sources, you can see how much this mottled museum type of effect really shines through. The leather is very supple and very nice to the touch, and of course full grain calfskin. However, I did find on that one of the shoes the clicking maybe was not so great uh, because I got some deep creasing after the first wear. However, it is really nice and pliable and feels very well and nice when you're actually wearing them. Uh, one more thing that you can actually notice is, of course, the shape. Because the shape is what really makes or breaks a shoe. And this particular one, it's called the Q90, has a phenomenal profile and, of course, shelf square shape. You can see that they draw inspiration very much from the other Italian brands, or at least the more Mediterranean, French-Italian style. And especially in the profile with a very structured side and, of course, uh, you know, the, the way the instep and the toe box really, really, really falls through. They did a really good job with uh, the actual uh, toe puff as well and toe stiffener. And everything is pretty much the highest quality materials. Of course, the stitching is as 
you would expect from uh, such a, an expensive pair of shoes. And the uh, images and the videos and uh, everything, like what you see on the screen, doesn't really lie. And you can see how much effort and how careful they were with the stitching, especially on the Hanson outsoles, of course, the stitching of the and the closing of the uppers. This is a very nice shoe with an extremely nice waist as well. Uh, you, you can see how it thins towards the waist a little bit more, uh, almost towards a spade sole, but with a more beveled waist. And they don't really go for the traditional, let's say, fiddleback, uh, very sharp uh, waist. Instead, it's more beveled and round. And it is, it is a really, really nice sole, to be honest. And one uh, thing that is often overlooked is also the heel, which uh, you can see the heel stack is, has a very, very nice shape. It, it becomes a little narrower towards the edge, but not too much that it appears too, too little or too small. I really, really like it. And as you can see maybe in this image as well, they also use uh, full leather stacked heels, so everything done by hand. Even the shoe trees are really nice, uh, high quality, and the waist, you can see, is very, very tapered, uh, uh, both in the actual waist, but also the heel stack on the bottom. The heel is, of course, uh, seamless, uh, which is a very nice touch. They didn't uh, chop more pieces. This is a very, very nice shoe and a very well uh, executed pattern. I really, really enjoy looking at it. Here you can take a look at the high quality interior, of course, in a natural type of uh, color lining. And I really, really like this shot where the, the logo and the initial fades in and out. And that was the close up, which I really hope you enjoyed. I did try some new things, uh, so let me know if you like them. And I thought that this kind of presentation is the only way for me to do justice to the shoes because they're truly phenomenal. Uh, for about $1,500, uh, you get a shoe that is pretty much handmade, uh, hand welded, hand clicked, uh, hand lasted, hand sewn, for a very good price point and very competitively priced uh, compared to uh, other brands of uh, similar, I would say, quality or even less in some cases. Uh, so if I had to compare them to something, I could tell you that they are pretty much up there with Paolo Scafora, Antonio Macariello, Stefano Bemer Tradizione for me, for example. You can only get them through the Acme Shoemaker website, uh, which is quite modernized. And I found that uh, the staff and the people I interacted with were quite friendly, polite, and it was generally a very nice experience. Uh, as for the shoes themselves, you pretty much show that uh, the material, the construction, the balance of the shoe, the shapes, uh, the little accessories and little details, uh, the actual presentation and unboxing, everything is top notch and something you should expect from those prices. And it's just a very, very nice experience. My only, I would say, criticism was in one of the shoes on the right shoe here on the side inside of the ball that uh, it creased quite deeply for after one wear and it's possible that uh, the clicking on that particular point was not, you know, the, the best it could have been. But this is a really, really minor thing that it is pretty much uh, irrelevant. All shoes and all leather will crease. As far as the size goes, uh, they also fit me quite well. Uh, this is, I think, on the Q90 last. It's a very nice soft square last, as you saw. And it has a very, very modern shape. Perfect for those that like this uh, kind of modern Italian uh, look to their shoes. And uh, generally, I'm a regular UK 8, I would say, or US 9D for my American friends. And these shoes are UK 8. So I choose my true to size size. And I would say that it is rather correct. So I don't have any heel slip here. Uh, there is just enough uh, space on the toe for me. Uh, my instep is a little higher, especially on the right foot, and it still fits me well. It also helps that it's a monk strap and it's a little more, more flexible on the top here. And I would say that if you don't have a bit wider foot around the, you know, the widest point and you don't often get uh, to like your little toe uh, being pinched uh, in more sharp lasts and shapes, then it should fit you properly well at uh, your usual size. So the advice is take your regular UK, or at least on this last, or size down one from your usual, uh, let's say, Allen Edmonds sizing, uh, for a good reference. Uh, as for the shoes, I already told you what I think. I think they are uh, uh, excellent, and uh, there are so many to choose from. Um, generally handmade, apart from uh, some uh, newly released ranges, which they are very transparent about, and cost about like half the money. 
uh, so it's still pretty impressive. And these are shoes that I, I I think they look good, they're versatile and they're so easy to wear and just look forward to wearing them even more now that I have some more uh, mileage in them, I would say. So let me know what you think. Let me know about the video and uh, everything, what your thoughts are, maybe experiences are with uh, Acme Shoemaker. And uh, I will see you in the comments down below. Of course, uh, you know, if you're new to the channel or you've been watching for a while, Remember, press the subscribe button, uh, leave a like, press the notifications bell, leave a comment, and before we go, back to form with another dad joke. So one time, I told a joke during a Zoom meeting. Unfortunately, nobody laughed. Turns out I'm not even remotely funny. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.